This is the, uh, I think, well, uh, I didn't catch much of the, what uh, Hoyne said, but <laughs> this is, uh, this idea, the, what I will be talking about, triggered why in the Black Sea, actually, why uh, the Black Sea, why the catch stocks doesn't collapse in the Black Sea. So many, uh, so heavy fishing pressure, but still maintain, although anchovy, but still maintains. Well, we blame, we, we, uh, we say that it's uh, related to eutrophication, but you need to have a mechanism to, uh, to make use of this eutrophication. And, uh, and then it has to have some sort of, well, if you look at the data, I will not go into too much details, but if you look at the chlorophyll data, this is the climatology of 15 years of data. So you see in the Black Sea, the Black Sea has a cyclonic circulation around the boundary. So uh, the chlorophylls along the coast, both in summer and uh, in winter, but the interior part is cyclonic. The coastal part where there is high chlorophyll is anticyclonic. So simple geostrophic, the, the geostrophy uh, tells you the other way around. So interior part should have more productive than the coastal part. The coastal part is anticyclonic, but it doesn't work like that. So this is other way around. Why is that? And then uh, this is a sort of uh, this. And then I came to, uh, came to a conclusion that that's somehow related with the uh, boundary uh, current and frontal dynamics. And if you look at the, uh, the all the other uh, regions, uh, you can see the same similar features. For example. Uh, you can see here again, very nice uh, production along the Albor and uh, Algerian coast related with this coastal current and so many other places. And, uh, and this is our place. This is uh, rotated. But if you look at the, if you look at the uh, satellite data, winter, we are talking about the winter because in, the, in all those regions, Maximum production takes place in winter at the surface, and summer, as you know, it's at the subsurface levels. Uh, if you look at, there is uh, this kinds of boundary current production along the Catalan and the uh, Balearic uh, coast, along the Spanish coast. But in addition to that, there is a very, very, very interesting, very strong mesoscale variability. And so this mesoscale variability, this patchy distribution is related to a mesoscale variability that change from year to year. So it is, it is, it is entirely, what it tells, tells me it is entirely mesoscale dominated system. So we have two, uh, two problems, two, two, two cases, two points. One, production. The other, it's distribution patchiness, okay? So we need to come up with, a, with an explanation how this production takes place and how it is distributed over the basin uh, through eddies, okay? So this is the problem which we want to solve. So why we work on the uh, winter specifically? Because if you look at the data, uh, this is time series. So you can see uh, the peaks are in uh, sort of January, February. The blues are in Balearic Sea and the, oops, sorry. And the, the, the blacks are in the Catalan Sea, uh, averaged over the basin. Um, but you can see there are consistently peaks in winter, but there's a phase difference slightly. Balearic Sea uh, is, t t production takes place a little bit earlier than uh, uh, Catalan Sea. So Balearic is January, February, Catalan is February, March, and Catalan is stronger. So there is uh, a gradient from south to north. When you go to the, from Balearic to Liguria Provincial Basin or towards the Gulf of Lyon, so production is increasing, but they are all taking place. Even if, if you look at the, I didn't include here, but if you look at, if you put the Ligurian Provincial Basin peaks here, so it will be March, April, so it is a little bit more shift to the uh, late, late winter. So this is, the, this is the, the, the period, and these are the magnitude of production we are, really look, we are looking at. Okay, so, uh, so we want to 
uh, study this, uh, this, this phenomena. This means how the Catalan Balearic frontal boundary current controls winter biological characteristics. Okay, so this is the problem. And, and as, as I told you, that there are some, uh, uh, some indication that some diagnostic studies in the, uh, which has been uh, done uh, along the frontal zones, uh, especially around the uh, Barcelona uh, Mallorca transect by uh, Barcelona people, uh, they point out the importance of frontal dynamics. And there are also eddy pumping and upwelling dynamics, which has been pointed out. But you see, these are all kinds of subjective, or at best, quant uh, statistical evaluation, but nothing, nothing more than that. So we, we have no uh, quantitative assessment of, of, of showing that uh, these kinds of processes are taking place. In, uh, actually, actually, this is uh, the theory which I will tell you is uh, there is not, there is, this will be, if we can publish this work which was submitted yesterday, this will be the first of this, uh, of this kind of studies. Uh, the frontal dynamics, agiostrophic dynamics, which will tell you, uh, usually is used to explain uh, the production in open oceans say uh, oligotrophic systems, say subpolar front in the Atlantic Ocean, but nothing uh, has been applied to the marginal seas or semi-enclosed systems, so boundary currents along this semi So this will be the first study. So I'm, while I am using this Catalan Balearic Sea boundary current, uh, actually this is a case study that applies for entire marginal seas all over the world. So th this is the, 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 the region we are trying to model. Oops. Okay, the, the importance of this region uh, has this strong topographic slope, as you know, better than me. Uh, so that steers current uh, and the current flows along the slope. And also there is a slope around these islands. So that also steers the current. So, and the interior part of this deep basin so there is a deep basin between two uh, coastal, coastal domain, slope domain. And historical data uh, based on the hydrographic, hydrographic observations put forward a kind of schematic. So they say this current comes from all the way from the French coast, northern coast, comes flows here like that and goes all the way to down to Algerian basin. A part of it turns cyclonically and goes along the islands, okay, the slope along these islands. And there are some bifurcations, so there are some uh, local uh, circulations around. So this is a kind of schematic which has been developed. Although uh, some sort of variability, mesoscale variability associated with this has been also associated. Uh, but again, it is based on the uh, hydrographic data not in the much models. Okay, so, so uh, what, again, if we iterate, what we are trying to do is, so we will look at uh, boundary current instabilities. Boundary current instabilities are usually when the boundary currents becomes unstable. So depending on its nonlinearity, how much, how, how, how severe is nonlinear, you can develop Either uh, you can have uh, either quasiostrophic dynamics. Quasiostrophic dynamics, as you know, is weakly nonlinear systems. So, but if it is more nonlinear, very strongly nonlinear, so uh, in the front, if the front meanders uh, much strongly, and then you get the Rossby number on the order of one, close to one, or even higher than one in some cases, not in this marginal seas, but in the open ocean systems. And then you have agiostrophic dynamics, frontal dynamics. That's new. Quasiostrophic, we know there are plenty of papers so far. I mean, it has been explored. This concept has been explored for 20 years, last 20 years. But agiostrophy is not really explained much. Uh, so agiostrophy, uh, agiostrophic dynamics has been uh, put forward something like oh, 20, 30 years ago uh, in atmosphere, on atmospheric fronts. 
and then uh, apply it to open ocean systems, as I told you. That's all. And then now we are trying to apply it, implement it to the marginal seas here. Okay, so we, we, will, have, we will have a model, a uh, physical model, experience in ocean model, and the biological model is nothing fancy. Uh, this uh, very simple MPZD model, nutrient, phytoplankton, zooplankton, detritus. We have more complex models, but I think for this kinds of work, physical work, uh, it is enough to have this kinds of simplified thing. So that there is a point here why we choose simplified system because we want to uh, look at, we want to take the resource production, nutrient injection and primary production process up front. So we don't want to have too much uh, trophic interactions from the upper trophic level. So we want to minimize these kinds of trophic interactions. So if we have more complex biological model, and then we have to deal with, we have to understand what is the impact of all these zooplankton, phytoplankton kinds of interactions that will complicate the problem for nothing. Okay, so this is the model. Uh, this, this model has fairly good vertical resolution to incorporate this production stuff in the upper 100 meter. Uh, and also the, vertical, uh, the horizontal resolution is quite good, three kilometer, provided that baroclinic radius of the formation is on the order of 15 kilometers here. Okay, let me say for biologists, uh, let me tell you what is this for agiostrophic dynamics. This is important. So it is a kind of not, uh, uh, so, okay, here we have current. Okay, boundary current, it's lost, okay. We have boundary current, meandering. So coastal part of the meandering, uh, this current has anticyclonic eddy, might be an anticyclonic eddy in this, offshore part, cyclonic eddy, and this is the front, okay? So in quasi-geostrophic dynamics, uh, you know that the, this eddies, uh, this anticyclonic eddy is, is associated with uh, downward motion, and this cyclonic eddy is associated with uh, upward motion. So the upward motion, but this is not really strong, on the order of few meters per day in the cyclonic eddies. So this is what we used to know. So the eddies pump nutrients. But, but if you have strong nonlinearity because of this meandering of this, this stuff, and then you develop here uh, on both sides of the frontal zone, in a very narrow zone, you uh, develop a new circulation cross-frontal circulation. Uh, in this circulation, there is, you develop a vertical cell around the front, in which, on the, on the onshore side of the front, you get upwelling, upward motion. You see, opposite. And on the other side of the front, you get downwelling. This is, I will not go into detail, this is uh, conservation of potential vorticity. Uh, it, but it's text, textbook stuff. But this cell, the importance of this small scale secondary circulation is the, the strength of vertical motion here. Here, you get vertical motion uh, 10 meter per day. Even in the open ocean fronts, 100 meter per day. Huge amount of uh, vertical motion. So that is uh, this process here, uh, at least 10 times efficient than uh, uh, trophic dynamics. Okay, so you have these kinds of the, if you have nonlinearity of this, and then you have these kinds of thing, and then uh, you have a very strong, very efficient nutrient injection on the coastal side of the front, uh, which pro which brings nutrients up, and then produce uh, nutrients, uh, pr produce plankton production here, and then they may be uh, transported across the front on the other side, okay? And then subduct, and then uh, at deeper levels, and then goes back again to the, and so this is a sort of cross frontal circulation associated with very strong vertical vertical motion. So this is, this is the agiostrophic dynamics which we are interested to look at. Well, I don't think you will be uh, interested to look at this go in, unless you ask for 
uh, this is the model thing. And this is the initial conditions. Maybe I shouldn't uh, devote too much time. So if we initialize the model, OK. So the important thing here is we initialize the entire system uh, with uh, two kinds of profiles. Uh, one is, one is uh, for the uh, deep part, OK, one profile. So we don't introduce any uh, special variability in the system, OK? And uh, we also introduce another uh, profile for entire coastal zone uh, in the shallow zone. Uh, it's a slope, a shelf and slope zone. So we don't introduce any initial field, uh, field so that we know that whatever comes as a variability comes from the, our own dynamics, nothing from the uh, initial conditions. OK, so this is the initial uh, front we specify, OK, here. So this part is one uh, temperature salinity. This entire part is uh, another. Uh, and this is the front here, blue. And we also uh, put uh, in some simulations other fronts here, algae, I call uh, algae and fronts. Uh, if you look at the temperature data, you can see a very nice uh, front uh, separating this region from the uh, Algerian sim. So we looked at if there is also an effect on the dynamics, but uh, not, not much, as I can tell you. OK, so maybe I should go back. OK, so, uh, so this, uh, this front needs to be perturbed in order to get Barracking unstable. So in reality, in ocean, it is perturbed by topography. I mean, local geometrical conditions. If you have a cape headlands or uh, some sort of bumps, seals, etc., and also for by forcing, wind forcing, etc., uh, you need to have high, high frequency forcing. Usually, uh, so if one way of doing this, uh, perturbing this, uh, so you run the model with high frequency daily atmospheric forcing for 10 years, 20 years, and then you get very nice things. But here. We are looking at another shortcut, another way of doing the same thing with a process-oriented study. We perturb, we introduce very small, very small, you see this is salinity. So we introduce uh, small perturbations on, on, on top of this front here, okay? So this is the perturbation amplitude, this is the wave, okay? So you can put very different kinds of wave. Uh, so important thing here you just but, but the amplitude is so small i mean this is uh, the salinity one so this is on the order of 10 to minus 5 so 10 to minus 5 times very small negligible amount of perturbation and you can see if even this kind of small perturbation uh, leads uh, very very interesting uh, measure scale variability so this is the the way we perturb the system and then we also include the inflow from here, northern current, OK? So this is uh, along this uh, shelf slope zone here. We, we include, this is U0 is on the order of 50 centimeter per second. When it comes here, uh, this current is on the order of 30 centimeter per second. So on the order of one sweat drop, generally. But it may go as up to two sweat drop occasionally. So OK, and then what is our parameters to to controlling parameters to uh, to run the to, to look at the dynamics. So we have uh, three three parameters. This is the perturbation amplitude. This is the um, uh, the uh, perturbation wavelength. So this 50 means 150. You multiply with three, so that you will get the uh, the the kilometer wavelength. So this is 150 kilometers, 100 kilometer something like 60 kilometers here. So we have different wavelengths. Uh, so, and then we have cross-frontal density gradient. So, uh, so weak front, moderate front, and strong front. We have, so we have three scenarios, strong front and weak front, and, uh, and uh, strong um, uh, perturbations, weak perturbations. OK, and the small amplitude waves or longer amplitude waves. So the combination of these things 
control the dynamics, mesoscale dynamics of the system. And this is the front type. As I say, this is the uh, Spanish coast front, and these are the, as, uh, the Algerian fronts. OK. Uh, so let's look at this. OK, first, uh, let's, let's run a model without any perturbation. OK, no perturbation and weak paraclinic front. OK, and then see uh, what happens. So in this case, you don't expect any uh, instability in the boundary current. So boundary current will be stable. OK, it's like that. So it's very nice stable. And if you look at the phytoplankton data, you see nothing, no production at all. And the coastline, coastal zone, as, as low as interior, except uh, rivers, two rivers, OK? So what does that mean? So uh, what we learn from this, uh, as long as uh, there is no, if there is no perturbation on the system, system cannot generate uh, production. So this is the background situation. So this means that whatever we produce in the basin from now on, should be related with the instability of boundary current, OK? So we will now perturb this system, and we will see how we can get the uh, production. OK, now let's look at the there are two, two cases with low perturbation and low amplitude and high amplitude perturbations, OK? Low amplitude, high amplitude. Look at the difference, enormous difference between them. So in low amplitude case, uh, the current comes, which is close to the, very close to the uh, stable case, except some meanders, except some meanders, and as well as uh, very strong. If you look at the previous one, you can see that the uh, flow mainly goes down south. But there is a small weak bifurcation, uh, which we know by Larry Current. This is a famous cartoon thing, uh, which bifurcate. But uh, but this this uh, this even if you have a small perturbation in the system, you get dramatic mesoscale variability, and you can get very very interesting, uh, completely uh, mesoscale dominated uh, circulation around the Balearic Islands. Huh? And look at the uh, also the color. Okay, so the color uh, the the this density difference between coastal region and this uh, interior region is more than initially because what uh, this northern current bring, bring uh, the Gulf of Lyon shelf waters okay, down and make it fresh and more fresh. And so uh, by, 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 uh, by bringing uh, this Gulf of supporting from north, you uh, in, in time, during the course of time, you uh, gradually increase the frontal variability of the system as well. But if you have stronger amplitude, and you can see that that's, this is more this is more realistic case for the for the Catalan Sea. This is more unrealistic. But I mean, we are doing a uh, marginal sea kinds of uh, process study, so uh, this means that if you have, if you have stronger perturbations, you can even extend this front all all the way to the offshore region, and you look at the the location of the front, well in the, the interior basin, okay? The, all this large blue zone is, is dominated by a great deal of eddies, which are mostly uh, anticyclonic on the, on the coastal side. And these, these are on the yellow side is uh, more anticyclonic, okay? So uh, by looking at these two pictures, you expect that that dynamics would be more productive than the others. And, uh, and this dynamics produces, you see this one, and then you can see uh, this, this anticyclonic here. You can see here as well, and uh, this one as well here. So I mean, this even idealized model uh, can produce uh, synapse, the, the basic ingredients of the, of, the, of, the, of the cartoon schematic circulation system. So it's very, very, very interesting to see that uh, okay, so uh, this is the corresponding plankton production maps at the surface. 
So uh, with, the, with this low perturbation, you get production along the coast, okay? So uh, in unstable, in the stable case, you have nothing here. By just weakly perturbing the system, you get great deal of production. But it is very uh, confined uh, to the shelf and upper slope zone. Doesn't extend. But if you have strong, uh, and then you have great deal of production all over the system. <coughs> so what does that mean? So we find out that there is a linear relation between perturbation and amplitude and plankton production. So beyond that threshold value, uh, you have, uh, that's a nonlinear system, so you, beyond the threshold, you get more production suddenly. From 1 to 1.5, you get the difference. Okay, so now let's look at the, uh, the, the impact of perturbation wavelengths. So this is uh, longer waves in the system, and this is shorter waves. So again, if you have shorter waves in the system, less than 100 kilometer, uh, which is typical for that region, actually, uh, instead of this, uh, you get uh, more possibility of production. OK, let's look at the, the cross frontal density structure, weak, moderate, and strong. Well, you look at, as you can see, uh, as long as you have front, it does the job. It doesn't matter how strong it is. So this picture doesn't, is not much different than this one. So uh, we, we, we say that plankton production does not strongly sensitive to the cross frontal density structure, not as, as strong as the perturbation uh, field, okay? So this is, this is uh, very important because uh, you don't need uh, to have very strong frontal development to get production in, in nature. So if you have something there, that's okay. That, that will do the job. Okay, so that's the implication. Okay, this, uh, uh, this is the comparison. Oops, sorry. So if you do whatever, uh, increase the, I mean, if you put the Algerian front, you don't get much difference. This is without front, this is with front. You, you get extra thing, but that's not really much. So Algerian front, although, although Algerian front develops a lot of mesoscale variability here, eddies, but these eddies uh, do not turn into the production. So they don't produce much, much by, by, you know, phytoplankton. So these are just physical eddies. Okay, so what, what we say, the front, if it is stable, uh, it is an ecological barrier, okay? So it just, it just traps everything within the coastal zone. But if it is unstable, it is the other way around. So it, it distributes, it goes into the all the way. So uh, the front is, has two, 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 two properties, depending on its stability properties, either keeps everything uh, in one place or distributes, help contribute to distribution. That's very important. So the other thing, this is very important, and that is something. This is the surface, oops, sorry. So now uh, I look at one of the uh, simulations, which is the most productive one. I select the most productive one. And this is the, at the surface, and this is 25 meter depth. Uh, if you look at the 25 meter depth, plankton production distribution is more than surface. Why is that? Because it is winter. I mean, in summer, it's, you, you say subsurface chlorophyll maximum. But here, we don't have this kind of concept. This is the middle of the winter. So, uh, OK, to, look, to understand that, we look at this, this is the, this is complicated pictures, but I don't want to go too much details on it. This is the relative vorticity field. Relative vorticity means Rossby number, okay? So if you look at this, the blue is uh, positive vorticity, okay? And the reds are negative vorticity. Here the vertical velocity at 50 meter depth, and the blues are uh, downward, 
and the reds are upward. Okay? And uh, here, the, the contours, uh, this white region is, is less than 5 meters per day. So uh, here, what you see, all these colors, is more than 5 meters per day. And as you, as you look, as you look, interior part where there is eddies, uh, cyclonic eddies, and uh, not much activity, is very weak. Vertical motion, which means weak nutrient injection. But if you look at this frontal zone, uh, you have uh, you have uh, both sides. But these strong strong uh, motion are uh, coincided uh, along the frontal zones. Okay, so if but this is this values here. Oops, sorry, this values. If you look at this, this uh, blue and uh, red colors, this is a maximum 20 meters per day. It doesn't go 50 or 100 as in open ocean. Okay? So this means that uh, a geostrophic dynamics is taking part on the system, but it is not very strong because it's expected because this is a very narrow uh, current, weak current, as compared to Gulf Stream or subpolar. Uh, current in the ocean, you know, it's one meter per second, 100 kilometer wide. So, uh, uh, because vertical velocity decrease towards zero at the surface, because they are weak, so they they take they uh, take part in the injection of putting the nutrients to the surface, euphotic layer, but not efficiently up to the surface. So the nutrients are more uh, accumulated at the subsurface levels within the euphotic zone something like 30, 40, 50 meters, and declines towards. So that's the reason why. But uh, the nutrients are 30, 40 meters, OK? But this place still has uh, radiation, OK, to promote uh, production. So that's the reason why we have uh, production uh, more at the subsurface than the surface. But this is nothing, as I say. This is nothing to do with the subsurface chlorophyll maximum dynamics, uh, which is uh, which takes place during the summer, which is entirely different stuff. Okay, so so far, all the simulations which I have described uh, had no mixing. I mean, mixing uh, standard weak mixing, uh, no mixing associated with uh, buoyancy loss, cooling. Okay. But in winter, we have uh, cooling, and uh, cooling induced vertical mixing. Cooling is more uh, important in early winter, December, January, and then declines towards zero uh, late February, February, early March, and then goes to warming cycle, OK? So the dynamics, which I have described so far, applies for the late winter, when there is weak mixing. But what happens if there is uh, some mixing in the system? Be uh, because this mixing will be able to take uh, these nutrients, which is accumulated at the 25, 30 meter through agiostrophic dynamics, and will bring the surface. So this is what you expect. OK, so this is what you get. Once you have, if you have, apply a cooling at some moderate 50, uh, which might be up to 100 watt per meter square in the strong uh, cooling case. But 50 is typical values for the region. OK? So this is without cooling, and this is with cooling at the surface. So as I said, uh, this cooling uh, induced vertical mixing bring all the nutrients to the surface, and then Entire euphotic layer from 0 to 50 meter, okay, or 75 meter up to 75 meter becomes highly pro productive. Okay? So the, as, if you look at these values, uh, something like up to 2 millimole nitrate per meter per meter. But this is too high for this region. This is good for Black Sea, not for the Catalan Sea or Balearic Sea. It's too high, unrealistic. Uh, so what is the problem? Is this model deficiency or something else? Again, again, uh, for all these simulations which I described so far, 
uh, I prescribed low grazing rate, low zooplankton grazing, so that we kept minimize uh, the zooplankton grazing, so look at the phytoplankton process efficiently. We know that this might be related with somehow with weak grazing because there is phytoplankton production, but there is no zooplankton uh, to eat them, to consume them. So what happens if we increase, increase the zooplankton grazing rate to a realistic value, and then you can get this kind of distribution from here to here. So uh, the, the, the values are decreased twice. Okay, so it becomes a more realistic. Uh, remember that this is the the most exaggerated picture you can get. I mean, you don't even get this in the in the Catalan Sea, but even uh, if you have this exaggerated case, this is what you will get. Okay, with more realistic cases, uh, you get less less phytoplankton values, which is which will be consistent with the uh, chlorophyll values which I showed at the at the beginning. Okay. So this is the this is the whole story. So, uh, wh okay, okay. What 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 we come up with? Uh, ah, okay, one more thing I forgot to mention. There are. This is I, at the beginning. I said uh, this is this dynamics, production dynamics, phytoplankton dynamics takes place through simultaneous roles of agiostrophic and coastrophic. So here in the Balearic Sea, uh, there is no agiostrophic dynamics. All this region is uh, occupied by cyclonic eddies, which are very purely, uh, which is poor in uh, supplying nutrients. So, uh, so, but there is a great deal of production here. In the, in the in the shelf region through agiostrophic dynamics as well as the river input and these are distributed all over the basin through eddy processes front eddy interactions eddy eddy interactions and cross cross shelf cross frontal circulations etc so uh, to make the long story short agiostrophic dynamics produces plankton production this is the source this dynamics is, make, is the source. Quasi-geostrophy distributes them, steer them all over the basin. So uh, they work in harmony. Okay, uh, so if you have, as, as you can see in the, uh, in the early slides, if you have a weak stable front, only a geostrophic dynamics takes place you know, along the shelf. But there is no geostrophic eddies, quasi-geostrophic eddies to distribute them. So you have only localized production. But if you have coastrophy in addition to agiostrophy, and then you have more widespread uh, distribution, more, more uh, feasible, more efficient uh, dynamics in terms of biology. Okay, so now I come to, uh, to the observation. I will show you a few, few observations, which there is not much observation here. Uh, unfortunately, because not only for the Catalan Sea, all over the marginal seas, because this requires dedicated observations. You need to go and measure the cross-frontal uh, system by, you know, very uh, synoptic observations, daily observations. Usually, the biological observations is just made a sort of uh, course resolution surveys. You don't know when, you don't know where is the front. And, you, and uh, the time you go to the sea may not coincide with the frontal case, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. But, 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 uh, apart all these difficulties, this is a strata paper. It's very interesting. This is the only February winter cruise which is published data I found in the literature, February 1990. This is Barcelona to uh, Mallorca. And look at the uh, peak of chlorophyll, as I, you know, exactly as we have predicted, yes, at the subsurface. Okay, so this is good. This is another data. Uh, they very nice work. They have done a great deal of, although they are summer, uh, but 
it doesn't matter really much because we are looking at mesoscale dynamics rather than seasonality. So you look at this, uh, it is hard to interpret them, but these uh, colored uh, regions are high larvae, anchovy and uh, sardine larvae. I think this is anchovy. Uh, so you look at uh, you look at that. This is the front, and these are the anticyclones, etc. I mean, this these pictures are, if you look at closely, if you compare this with the simulations, you you will see a very good match. Really, all these anticyclones, oops, sorry. all these anticyclones here exactly fits with our simulations. So it's too good to be true. <laughs> this thing, okay? So it's very uh, encouraging. And the other thing with the data, okay, I said uh, weak, if there is a weak zooplankton, then the system will be overproductive in terms of phytoplankton. But we don't see that, okay? So the system has low production, I mean low phytoplankton, chlor chlorophyll, if you look at the pictures. Uh, and then what happens? And then uh, you need to have uh, some sort of high zooplankton so that that uh, food will go to the uh, trof higher trophic levels. So this is the, the data in front of the here, Palma, Palma de Mallorca. Very nice time series, chlorophyll. And this peaks, zooplankton peaks, follows the winter chlorophyll, okay? And then they are something like uh, three to six uh, milligram per meter cube. So according to my conversion uh, to uh, nitrate millimole thing, uh, that corresponds, this peak corresponds to one millimole nitrate per meter cube. So this means, again, to, uh, comparing with our numbers in the simulation, on the order of the same on the same order of uh, values of the phytoplankton biomass. So the system, system has equally good uh, zooplankton production, okay? So there is, this means that very efficient uh, transfer of uh, energy from first trophic level to second trophic level. That uh, supports our hypothesis. So, Okay, uh, just let me one more word. This, this thing, this thing has been noted something like 30, 40 years ago by Margalef and Estrada. They said that the system uh, had too much fish, I mean, not too much, but uh, fairly uh, important fish production, but uh, no phytoplankton biomass to support that. So they call it as a paradoxical situation, okay? And then they have, of course, this has been 30, 40 years ago, I think it was 70s, I think, or 80s, early 80s. Uh, at that time, mesoscale dynamics and all the kinds of these things, they didn't know much. Uh, we didn't have much computer simulations of, of these dynamics. So they have pointed out that uh, they didn't know how to explain this. So they, they, of course, well, at that time, classical knowledge has, uh, so you have cyclonic circulation inside the Balearic and Catalan Sea, doming of the isotope, so there is upwelling. But they, they had come out that this upwelling through cyclones, classical quasi geostrophic dynamics, can explain only one third of this whole story. So they have realized that uh, there is some other things which are important, which are taking place but they didn't know what that is. They said, okay, the mesoscale things, blah, blah, blah. They said, now we show that really, the, we, 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 uh, we explain here uh, quantitatively that that is really the, what is happening. Uh, so mesoscale dynamics, small scale quasi geostrophic dynamics, uh, con combination of agiostrophy and geostrophy can explain all this, all this high, high uh, efficiency. So, uh, high production, fish production, and low chlorophyll uh, doesn't mean a paradox. Actually, there is a, there is a reason for that. Okay, it's not anymore paradox. 
So that's a sort of contribution, I think, which we uh, brought here uh, with this work. OK, what we learned from this, uh, just a few slides. Cause just dystrophy uh, introduced uh, very complex mesoscale dynamics uh, depending on the instability characteristics. And mesoscale dynamics, these instability characteristics contribute to the production. Okay, agiostrophy pro produced uh, biomass and coastrophy distribute. And the uh, Mediterranean paradox is, 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 is really no more paradox. Okay, so this is a kind of summary. So what is next? What, what we do, what we want to do? Maybe just one slide. Um, I, I started doing uh, sort of, this is now, you know, the, our previous work, I mean, the present work uh, considered this now. We, I want to look at the bigger picture, okay? So uh, the same story for the bigger picture, because this, will, this is a just snapshot that I have done a trial experiment. So this is uh, Alvor and Karen, the gyre, and then this meanders, and then all this uh, dynamics in, in integrated fashion, how that in, uh, alborancy and the balericcy, uh, algeriancy interacts with each, each other. So that will be the next step. Thank you for listening. Thank you.